Hi there, it's Mrs Brooks and this week I'm going to be teaching you about paragraphs. So grab a notebook and a pen so that you can make some notes and complete the short tasks that I have created for you. Okay, so what we're doing. Today I'm going to show you how to recognise paragraphs and when to change paragraphs. We'll be using a technique called tip top and we're going to complete some short tasks we're doing this to help you with the diary writing task that you will be completing in a week or so's time and your English teacher will be marking. So what are paragraphs? They're sentences that are organised into chunks of writing. Paragraphs help us to organise our ideas and they help our readers to follow information clearly. Here's our first task, really simple task. So, what I want you to do is to have a look at the extract. You don't even need to read it. Just work out how many paragraphs there are. Then think about how you know that there is more than one paragraph. Have a quick look through. I'll read it for you whilst you work out how many paragraphs and how you know that there is more than one paragraph. Rats make excellent pets and can be easily and cheaply bought. If you wish to keep rats as pets, you should go to a good pet shop or contact an official breeder who can give you advice. It's important to choose your pet rats carefully. Check that they are healthy. You'll know because they will be alert and their eyes and nose and ears will be clean. Rats must be at least six weeks old before you buy them and they should be kept in pairs of either males or females. So how did you do? Did you spot these two paragraphs? And we know that because they've left a blank line in between the paragraphs. Leaving a blank line will help your reader to realise that you're starting a new paragraph. As I said earlier, we use paragraphs to organise ideas and they help our readers follow those ideas. When we need to start a new paragraph, we change because we've changed the time or the place or the topic or the person speaking or being described. Each time you change one of these things, time, place, topic or person, you need to start a new paragraph. So let's have a look at time first of all. Paragraphs are used to show the movement in time and you use time markers, usually at the start of the paragraph, to indicate that shift in time. Some examples of time markers are here immediately shortly after, later, earlier, yesterday, after lunch. Time markers are going to be really useful when you are writing your diary entries because they will help the reader move along with you and realise when each action or thought process happened for you. Okay, so let's have a look at a short task for this. What I want you to do is to have a look at the paragraphs below and to find the time markers in those paragraphs. I'm going to give you a couple of moments to skim and scan through and work out which are the time markers. Quick reminder that they often come at the start of a paragraph. Okay, so did you find the time markers? Paragraph one, this morning. Paragraph two, a few minutes later, and paragraph three, suddenly. Let's have a look at shifting place now. So if you change place, if you move location, then you can start a new paragraph. It might be that you are moving from one city to another city, from one country to another country, or it could be just as simple as moving from one room to another. Okay, so let's have a look back at our previous extract and see if we can find the location that was used in paragraph one and the location that was used in paragraph two. I'm going to read the paragraphs to you. So you're looking for the location in paragraph one and the location in paragraph two. This morning, I woke up unusually early. Something had disturbed me from my sleep. I rubbed my eyes and stretched wearily. I hated being woken up early. What could it have been? A noise, a bright light? 
I grabbed my dressing gown and stumbled towards the bathroom. A few minutes later, the reason for my rude awakening became apparent. A huge shadow appeared at my bathroom window. I squinted through bleary eyes, trying to make out the weird shape. It could be a crane. I don't remember any building work being planned. And besides, this was the middle of the countryside, Greenbelt land. No one was allowed to build within miles of my house. My mind wanders as I peered at the frosted glass of the bathroom window. Suddenly I jolted, a deafening noise attacked my ears. I was instantly wide awake. It sounded like a train and a scream and a plane all melded into one ear splitting sound. Threw open the bathroom window. I could not have prepared myself for the sight that met me. It was monstrous, terrifying, ugly. A gigantic spacecraft had landed on the field at the back of my house. So did you get the two locations? First one in paragraph one was the bedroom. Didn't actually say they were in the bedroom, but we got the clues from the fact that they were waking up, pulling on the dressing gown. And the second location was the bathroom. Okay. Let's move on to you doing a little bit more work. So you might want to make yourself a short table that's just got numbers one, two, three, and four, and then space next to each of the numbers for writing the topics down. So I've given you four paragraphs here, all about rats, but each paragraph has a different focus, and a slightly different aspect of looking after rats. So what I want you to do is to write down what each paragraph is about. I'll read them all, and then you can pause the video and make some notes. Rats make excellent pets and can be easily and cheaply bought. If you wish to keep rats as pets, you should go to a good pet shop or contact an official breeder who can give you advice. It's important to choose your pet rats carefully. Check they are healthy. You'll know because they will be alert and their eyes, nose and ears will be clean. Rats must be at least six weeks old before you buy them and they should be kept in pairs of either males or females. Rats need a large cage, which is at least 60 by 30 by 30 centimetres in size. The cage must contain somewhere cosy for your rats to sleep and have solid, not wire, flooring. Rats must have toys to play with, such as ladders, tubes and ropes. Rats are omnivorous, which means that they will eat almost anything. However, you must ensure that you, your rat gets a balanced diet, including good dried rat food, rice, pasta, wholemeal bread and fresh vegetables. Rats must have fresh water, which should always be put in a water bottle. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. You can pause the video now and I want you to write down what each paragraph is about. Okay, how did you do? Did you find out what each paragraph was about? Paragraph one was talking about rats being good pets. Paragraph two was telling you how to choose a rat. Paragraph three was telling you how to allow them to live safely. And paragraph four was about the food that they need. You might have noticed that the topics of each paragraph came in the first sentence of each of the paragraphs. Called a topic sentence. So imagine that you were looking to uh, take care of a rat and you wanted to just find out how much space you're going to need. You could skim and scan through the paragraphs to find the one about the cage size. So that's why your topic sentence is really helpful to allow your reader to pick out the information that's important to them and also helps guide them through your text. So our final reason for why you want to change a paragraph is when you are either introducing dialogue and to help the person who's reading keep track of who's speaking, or if you're bringing in new characters and you want to describe each new character. So, first one. I've given you an extract here from Harry Potter, and I want you to identify the two speakers in this extract. So let's have a listen to our extract from Harry Potter. 
Hello, Nick, said Harry. Hello, hello, said nearly headless Nick, starting and looking round. He wore a dashing plumed hat on his long curly hair, the tunic with a ruff which concealed the fact that his neck was almost completely severed. He was pale as smoke and Harry could see right through him to the dark sky and torrential rain outside. You look troubled, young Potter, said Nick, folding a transparent letter as he spoke and tucking it inside his doublet. So do you, said Harry. Okay, so who are our two speakers in that extract? Yep, we've got Harry Potter and we've got nearly headless Nick. Giving you an extract here in our final section, which comes from Roald Dahl's autobiography. It's a particularly gruesome section of his autobiography where he's describing a trip to the doctors. I've managed to keep it to quite a safe piece here. What I want you to do is to work out how many characters there are in this extract. The doctor now put some water to boil in an aluminium mug over a gas flame and into the boiling water he placed a long, th thin, shiny steel instrument. I sat there watching the steam coming off the boiling water. I was not in the least apprehensive. I was too young to realise that something out of the ordinary was going to happen. Then a nurse dressed in white came in. She was carrying a red rubber apron and a curved white enamel bowl. She put the apron over the front of my body and tied it round my neck. It's far too big. Then she held the enamel bowl under my chin. The curve of the bowl fitted perfectly against the curve of my chest. Okay, so how many characters can you find in that extract? Did you find three? So, paragraph one, we've got the doctor. We've also got the narrator, which is Roald Dahl there, so it's saying I. And then finally, in the second paragraph, we've got the nurse. But you can see how Roald Dahl has shifted his paragraph and started a new one when he describes the entrance of the nurse to the scene. Okay, we're nearly there now. We've got one more task after this one. So I've given you here a paragraph, well it looks like one paragraph, but it's actually more than one paragraph. It's not been split up. So what I want you to do is to work out where the paragraph should, each paragraph should start. I'll read the section to you. The cage must be cleaned thoroughly every week. The rat's bed must be kept clean. Your rats will enjoy being brushed gently with a very soft hairbrush. If your rat becomes unwell, you should take it to a vet to be treated. Do not delay as rats can become seriously ill very quickly. The National Fancy Rat Society holds shows across the country. You can show your pet rats and perhaps win a prize and get information about shows at www.nfrs.org. Okay, so I want you to work out where the new paragraph should start and you can aspire and work out the topic of each of the paragraphs that you have identified. I'll pause the video now and then have a think about it and then check on the next slide for how the paragraphs have been split up. Okay, how did you do? Did you get it into three paragraphs? So paragraph one is about cleaning after your rats, either the cage or the rat itself. Paragraph two is about healthcare and about going to the vets. And the paragraph three is about the Fancy Rat Society. Okay, your final task for this PowerPoint is to have a go at showing off your paragraphing skills now by writing a minimum of three paragraphs. I've given you three topics to choose from. So, you could either write about how to look after a pet. Maybe you've got a cat or a dog or a rabbit at home that you could write about. Uh, it could be about how to play a computer game. Maybe give some simple instructions on how to play a computer game of your choice. Or it might be a few paragraphs about how you could help out at home. So remember, I want a minimum of three paragraphs. You need to use tip top. I'd like you to use a time marker 
and I want you to take care with your spelling, punctuation and grammar. OK, that's a task for you to complete and I'll push you on to the last slide and just show you what else you need to do. So finally, you are more than welcome to email your paragraphs to your English teacher or you can send them to me. My email is on the PowerPoint, sbrooks at stratfordhigh.com. That's not the end of it. That was just an introduction to writing about paragraphs. We want to fully test this skill. So if you go to your workbook that you've been sent by school, which is the Key Stage 3 workbook, I want you to turn to pages 68 to 70 and there are some tasks in there that you need to complete. So there are nine questions. Remember that you should be spending your English lesson time on this. So you've got 90 minutes in total and see how far you get through. So you should have completed the tasks on this PowerPoint and then you move on to your workbook and you can do your answers in your workbook. There's more details on the workbook lesson in class charts to help you. You can also check your answers at the back of the workbook, but don't cheat because you're only cheating yourself. So have a go first and if you get really stuck, then you can have a look at the answers to help you. If you need any help whatsoever, then just send me an email. Thanks a lot. See you soon.